Hey there photographers, welcome to this lens review guide. Today we're going to dive deep into the world of the Canon EF 100mm f 2.8L IS macro lens, a real gem in Canon's prestigious L series lineup. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out in photography, this lens has got you covered for all of your macro adventures. In this video, I'll take you through the nitty gritty details of its build, what makes it tick, its strength, and yes, even its quirks. I'll show you how it performs in various scenarios, discuss its video capabilities, and so much more. So let's jump right in. All right, let's talk about the focal length of this lens. Now, why does it matter? Well, the focal length basically decides how much of a scene you can capture. So this lens has a nominal focal length of 100 millimeters. That means it's great for things like portraiture, products, and of course, getting up close and personal with those tiny details in macro photography. But hold on, here's the cool part. The actual field of view you get depends on the camera you're using it with. If you're rocking a full frame camera, you get the real deal, 100 millimeters. It's like having a medium telephoto lens that's perfect for isolating subjects and creating that lovely background blur. Now switch gears to an APS-C sensor camera and things get interesting. These cameras have a crop factor of about 1.6 times. What that means is when you slap this 100mm lens on an APS-C crop sensor camera, it's like you're shooting with a 160mm lens because 100mm times 1.6 is 160. So on an APS-C camera, it's even tighter, pushing you further into the telephoto range. Great for subjects at a distance or really squishing that background, but you might need a little more room to work with in tight spaces. No matter which camera you're using though, remember that this lens brings some serious imaging firepower. Just keep in mind that effective focal length can change the way you frame your shots, depending on your camera. Now let's talk about the details of the Canon EF 100mm f 28 ls aperture. This is where the magic starts to happen. So this lens rocks a max aperture of f 28 And what does that mean? Well, it lets in a ton of light, which is great for a few reasons. First off, it gives you that gorgeous shallow depth of field. You know, that creamy background blur that makes your subject pop? Perfect for emphasizing your subject or creating that lovely bokeh effect. Plus, if you're shooting in low light situations, this wide aperture is your best friend. You can snap away without needing to bust out the flash or crank up the ISO. You can also dial it down to around f32 for a narrower aperture. This comes in handy when you want more of your image in focus, especially in macro photography. Tiny changes in aperture can make a big difference in your depth of field. Now here's a fun twist. The shape and design of the aperture blades can really jazz up your bokeh. This lens sports a rounded nine blade diaphragm. Translation, you get that dreamy circular bokeh that's oh so smooth. Say goodbye to those harsh angular highlights you might get with other lenses. So when you're out there shooting with this lens, expect your out of focus areas to look super pleasing and less like a geometry lesson. Okay, now let's talk about the nitty gritty of how this lens handles focus and why that's a big deal, especially for macro photography. First off, when I first got my hands on this lens, I was pretty stoked about the ultrasonic motor, or USM for short. Autofocus, it was swift and quiet. It was one of the quietest lenses I've ever used. Here's a clip so you can hear for yourself. Sure, there's a tiny bit of noise, but you practically need superhuman hearing to notice it, especially when you're out in nature or in regular shooting situations. To put it in perspective, another lens I have with a USM motor is a lot louder the Canon EF 24-70mm f4 lens. Now when it comes to actually getting the shot, this lens delivers. Whether I was shooting tiny critters up close for macro or doing some portrait work, it locked onto the subjects quickly and with precision. In low light, it did add a bit of hunting, but it wasn't a deal breaker, especially in daylight, and I'll touch a bit more on that later. And hey, there's a focus limiter switch to help out when it's feeling indecisive. This lens is mainly for macro and sometimes you need that hands-on touch for the perfect focus. The manual focus here is a breeze. The focus ring just feels right, smooth, and grippy. You won't find yourself overshooting the mark, which is gold in macro photography, where precision is everything. Speaking of getting up close, this lens lets you practically nose touch your subject. The minimum focusing distance is around one foot or 0.3 meters. So what this means is you can capture those intricate details that most folks never even notice. Think patterns on insect wings or the delicate textures on flower petals. Summing it up, whether you're trusting the autofocus or going manual, this lens is a winner. Canon clearly had precision and user friendliness in mind when they designed it. Now let's peek under the hood and get nerdy about the optics of this lens. This lens is packing a serious optical punch with 15 lens elements grouped into 12 groups. Now what does that mean? Well, it's all about maximizing image quality, especially when you're diving into the world of macro. When I was out there capturing those intricate details, the sharpness and clarity in my shots, they were jaw dropping. Now here's an interesting twist. Unlike some lenses, there are no spherical elements in this one. But don't fret, this design still works magic to minimize spherical aberrations. Translation, you get crisp, clean images, and I mean really clean. Even at the edges of the frame, I didn't notice much softness or distortion. 
And hey, if you do spot any tiny quirks, most editing software can handle them with profile corrections. So I wouldn't worry about it too much. Now let's talk about lens coating. The Canon EF 100mm f2.0 rocks Canon Super Spectra coating. So what does it do? It's like a superhero shield against flares and ghosting. In my experience, flaring was practically a no-show. Colors stayed punchy, and that all-important contrast, it was still on point. So I was definitely a happy camper. Now let's talk about distortion. Shorter focal lengths can sometimes play tricks with distortion, but not this lens and its longer focal length. With its 100mm focal length on the telephoto side of things, I didn't see any barrel or pincushion distortion. That's a win, especially in macro where straight lines and patterns are the name of the game. In a nutshell, when it comes to the optical design, this lens was clearly engineered with macro challenges in mind. It's all about delivering those sharp, clear, and true-to-life images. Now time to check out what this macro photography champ is made of. So this lens's lens barrel is mostly top-notch plastic. Now don't let that plastic scare you off. It's high quality stuff and it actually strikes a nice balance. When I first got my hands on this lens, it felt rock solid. The texture is just right, not too slippery so you won't accidentally drop it during those long shooting sessions. Now since this lens is part of Canon's L-series, um, the mount is metal, which is pretty standard for the big leagues. The metal mount means the connection between the lens and your camera is super secure. Every time I slapped this lens on my camera, it felt snug as a bug. No wiggling or wobbling. In the focus ring, it's rubberized as well. It's like a little tactile wonderland. Smooth and comfy to handle, but it gives you great feedback when you're dialing in that focus. And the filter thread is made of rugged plastic, but it's no weak link. Attaching filters like UV or polarizers was a breeze. All in all, this lens feels like it means business. It's got that premium vibe and is clearly built for serious macro photographers. Now here's something that's music to the ears of adventurous photographers. This lens comes with weather sealing. And why is that a big deal? Well, let's say you're out there chasing those macro wonders and you run into a bit of dust or some unexpected moisture. No worries, because the weather sealing has your back. It's like having a protective shield for your lens so you can focus on nailing that perfect shot instead of stressing about whether anything's going to sneak its way in and mess up your gear. In a nutshell, it's that peace of mind that lets you go all in on your photography adventures. Now let's talk about something that can make or break your day in photography, the weight of this lens. I mean, nobody wants to lug around a boulder, right? So this lens tips the scales at around 625 grams, which is roughly 1.38 pounds. Yeah, it's not the featherweight champ of the lens world, especially if you're used to those non-macro or non-L-series lenses. But here's the scoop. The weight isn't just for show. When I first grabbed hold of this lens, it felt solid, durable, and high quality. Now here's the cool part. Despite its heft, it's not a shoulder breaker, especially when you're out there doing handheld macro shots. That weight actually adds to the stability. You can grip the lens barrel and it feels like it's got your back, reducing those tiny hand jitters that can sneak into your shots. During longer sessions, yeah, you do start to notice the weight, especially if you're on the move. But here's the thing, it's never uncomfortable. In fact, it kind of grows on you, especially when your camera body's in sync. Now, if you pair this lens with a lighter camera body, like a crop sensor camera, you might get a bit of front heavy tilt. Just a heads up. If you're used to those lightweight primes, there might be a little adjustment period, but you'll get used to it. And for what you get in return, which is, you know, optical wizardry, image stabilization, and a tank-like build quality, I'd say the weight is a fair trade-off. For those marathon shooting sessions, uh, just be sure to pack a camera bag. Your neck and hands will thank you if you're on the move for a while. Now let's talk about a feature that's like your photography superhero, the image stabilization in this lens. This lens rocks Canon's hybrid image stabilization system. Hybrid is the key word here because it tackles both wobbles and shakes like a pro. And trust me, in macro photography, even the tiniest of movements can ruin your shot. So when I first took this lens for a spin in handheld macro mode, I couldn't help but give a nod of appreciation to the IS system. It let me push my luck with slower shutter speeds without cranking up the ISO or sacrificing my aperture settings. And the result? Still razor sharp photos. I mean, imagine photographing a delicate flower. With image stabilization, you can just ease up on the shutter speed and still capture crisp details. And here's the sweet part. The IS system works like a silent ninja. Sure, if you listen real close, you might catch a faint hum, but it's nothing that'll bug you. No sudden jolts or surprises either, which can be a real mood killer with lesser lenses. Now, the ultimate test for me was low light photography with no tripod. This is where the image stabilization really shines. It gives me the ability to snap detailed, sharp shots without being tethered to a tripod. Of course, for the absolute pinnacle of macro perfection, a tripod's your best buddy. But it's comforting to know that the image stabilization is like a trusty safety net ready to catch you if you slip. Now let's get to the good stuff. How does this lens handle the big three? Macro, product, and portrait photography. First up, macro photography. This is where the Canon EF 100mm f2.8 lens flexes its muscles. With one-to-one -one true magnification, you're diving into a world of life-size details. I'm talking intricate patterns, textures, and those little hidden secrets that your eyes can't catch. And the best part, it's not just about getting close, it's about getting close and staying razor sharp. The crispness in those tiny details is a game changer. Plus, that hybrid image stabilization, it's like having a steady hand even when you don't. 
Now let's talk product photography. This lens is a champ here too. It captures products with pinpoint precision. When I snap shots on my vintage Minolta camera, I could practically feel the engravings and textures through the photo. And the wide f2.8 aperture, it's a lifesaver. It helps you highlight every product detail while giving you that sweet background blur to keep the distractions at bay. And if you're an online seller looking to make your product shine, this lens is your secret weapon. And now, the surprise twist. Portrait photography with a macro lens? The 100mm focal length is a portrait magician. It serves up a flattering perspective and that natural compression makes your subjects pop. When I used it for portraits, the images were tack sharp, and that f2.8 aperture? It's like your backstage pass to beautiful bokeh. Your subject stands out and the background melts away. Skin tones look real, and colors? They're true to life. Even when you're shooting wide open, your subject's eyes stay crisp and there's no weird fall off in sharpness. In a nutshell, no matter what you're shooting, whether it's macros, products, or portraits, this lens is a winner. To fully explore how this lens performs, I tested the image quality at different f-stop ranges, so let's check it out now. Now let's switch gears and talk about the video quality with this lens. Yep, it's not just for photos, it's got some videography chops too. Here's the lowdown. First off, when you dive into shooting video with this lens, you'll quickly notice the autofocus system. I touched on it earlier, but that ultrasonic motor deserves a spotlight. It delivers a buttery smooth and surprisingly quiet autofocus experience, which is like music to a videographer's ears. Now let's talk about the secret, the hybrid image stabilization. When you're out there doing handheld video, this IS system is your best friend. It's like having an invisible steady cam built in cutting down those annoying jitters and shakes, giving you silky smooth footage. As for the video quality itself, it's pretty much on par with the stellar image quality. The colors pop, the sharpness on point, and the magical f2.8 aperture, it's your ticket to cinematic depth of field. That means you can make your subject stand out against a dreamy, blurred background. Super handy for interviews, close-ups, and those moments when you want to capture something special. Now there's one thing to keep in mind. This lens rocks 100mm focal length, which can feel a bit tight in small spaces or for wide-angle shots. But here's the deal, it excels in specific videography scenarios. Think close-ups, interviews, or any time you need to tightly frame or isolate your subject. For everything else, you might want to bring another lens to the party. So there you have it, this lens is like your videography sidekick ready to deliver the goods in the right situations. Now let's shed some light on how this lens handles those low-light situations. First things first, the f2.8 aperture is your secret weapon here. When the lights are low, this wide aperture is your best friend. It lets more light hit that camera sensor, giving you more room to play with slower shutter speeds and lower ISO values. Say goodbye to those noisy, grainy shots. Well, that's not all. Let's talk again about that hybrid image stabilization. When you're out there without a tripod in the dim and dark, you might need to slow down that shutter speed to let more light into the camera. And here's where the image stabilization swoops in like a superhero. It fights off those shaky hands that often comes with slower shutter speeds and the camera shake that accompanies it. Now, how's the autofocus doing in low light? Well, it's like a champ, but it does have its limits. In super dim situations, I did notice a tiny bit of slowdown as the light levels dropped. It wasn't a showstopper though, just something to be aware of. Oh, and when it comes to noise and grain, well, you know, we've all been there, cranking up the ISO to the max because we're desperate for more light. But with this lens, things are a bit different. The wide aperture and the freedom to use slower shutter speeds thanks to the hybrid image stabilization, it means you can keep your ISO levels in check. And that's the magic formula to keep noise and grain at bay. In a nutshell, no lens can completely erase the challenges of shooting in low light, but this lens sure makes it a heck of a lot easier. That wide aperture and robust image stabilization, they're your low light allies. Now let's dive into some image quality tests at different f-stop settings in low light conditions. So wrapping it up, my time with the Canon EF 100mm f2.0 has been nothing short of impressive. This lens doesn't just find its place in the esteemed Canon L-Series lineup, it shines as a top tier macro lens. From its stunning optical design to its rock solid build, it's a testament to Canon's commitment to delivering professional grade gear. But here's the kicker, it's not just about macro photography. This lens surprised me with its versatility. From portraits to product shots and even diving into videography, it's like having a Swiss Army knife in your camera bag. You get that sharpness that makes your images pop, the beautiful bokeh that's like a painter's brushstroke, and image stabilization that keeps things steady when the going gets tough in low light. 
Now sure, there are a couple of quirks. On a crop sensor camera, that 100 millimeter can turn into 160 millimeter, which might be a tad bit more uh, zoomed in than you like. And in the darkest of dark, the autofocus might need a moment to catch its breath. But these are just tiny speed bumps. Whether you're a macro enthusiast, a portrait wizard, or a product pro, or just somebody hungry for some detail, the Canon EF 100mm f2.8 L is your trusty companion. And if you're interested in purchasing this lens, I've left an affiliate link in the description box down below that will go towards supporting the channel. Thanks for watching.